Hi everybody, it is now September 3rd, 2019. It is 2.16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, it seems that <laughs> I'm back to all of the problems that I was having on my computer, the one that died you know, a couple of months ago, and well, my computer has been crashing strange things are happening and I do not get it I don't get it I do not get it it's very frustrating well I finally got it up and running and let's see if I can get this video done I'm going to start with a video that was linked to below my video Hurricane Dorian something strange is happening to our weather 2019 hacking the headlines and well I'm going to subscribe because uh, I like what I heard I have not watched the entire video but she does go through a lot of government documents military documents on weather modification but listen to what she has to say just in the f first few minutes. You know what, guys? I'm also experiencing vision problems right now. Just occurred, just started. Um, very weird, very weird. Oh, and it just lifted. Okay, yeah, alrighty, so. Uh, do you see this straight lined? All right, you know, listen to what this woman has to say because this is someone who is living in reality and getting that something is very wrong here. Something's very strange about our weather. Yes. So, you know, I, I'm including this. Maybe you can circulate this video uh, to those who are still denying weather modification in your life. Maybe just listening to the first few minutes of this video might ah, open, you know, open their minds a little. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to Hacking the Headlines. I wanted to talk about Hurricane Dorian a little bit because we have yet another storm that is causing widespread destruction. This time it is in the Bahamas. Now it does look like Florida is going to be spared for the most part. We'll see what happens um, and we'll see what this storm does as it moves north along the coast. We do have 9-11 right around the corner, so there's that to consider but yeah it's just crazy how normal these storms have become and how they used to be like once in a lifetime weather events and now we are seeing them happen every single year multiple times a year uh, you know we had hurricane harvey hurricane irma katrina maria like i can't even remember them all now of course the mainstream media will try to blame it on things like climate change and global warming which is a whole other subject on its own but I think even the most skeptical person at this point uh, would at least have to consider the possibility that these are man-made weather events and this is weather modification, weather manipulation uh, because the government has openly admitted uh, they plan to control the weather and that they can control the weather. So we will go over some of that evidence um, here after I show you some of the footage from the Bahamas because it does look like they got quite the beating down there and it's really sad and heartbreaking to see so many people affected um, and to see such a loss of life and property and animals so yeah we should all be keeping these people in our prayers of course and as of right okay so I will link below and yeah it's devastating what has taken place in the Bahamas and I'm getting comments from people who believe the whole thing is a hoax I don't understand that I don't um, you know, it was not a Category 5, but th that they are using weather as a weapon, um, they can bring about tremendous devastation. Tremendous. And that's what has occurred in the Bahamas. So, 
Um, yeah, and I'll say it again. This is the kind of devastation that we have been seeing virtually every single day for months on end. Now, yeah, lots of birds and bats and bugs being captured on radar. That, if you didn't see my last video or don't know, yeah, Weather Channel, these meteorologists claim that all of the blue that we've been seeing on radar, well, uh, it's birds, bats, and bugs. Uh, sorry, but no. Now, um, look at the speed of that. Ah, and look at that extremely low frequency right there. All right. Uh, Dorian does not seem to have moved much. Now, Category 5, now they're claiming it's a Category 4, that it's weakened. Okay, but it's been sitting, sitting on this tiny island for how long? I, 24 hours? So, 180 mile per hour winds that have been going on for 24 hours, the island would be gone. Okay. So, no, it has not moved. Not moved. And I saw High Impact Flix's video, one mile per hour. One mile per hour. We're going to get into all of the evacuations that are going on up the East Coast, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, states of emergency, <clears throat> excuse me, declared, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. Wow, okay, so our government officials are on, on it. Um, it's really remarkable. Um, yeah, this is the new normal. But climate change and global warming would not bring about this kind of radical change so quickly. It would come uh, slowly. You know, the changes would be incremental. So, please, just use some logic. Um, we're now seeing... Well, how many evacuations have gone on? Uh, South Carolina? Well, South Carolina, four evacuations mandatory in four years. Okay. So, uh, whoa, what is this? What is this? And you see the evaporation taking place right here, but We've got some massive, massive high frequencies at work. This isn't Dorian. This is now, well, I guess they got something else going. Where is it going? Uh, Mexico? Texas? This where did this come from? It kind of came out of the blue. All of these huge storms occurring. I don't know why this is occurring, why that white sheet is flying over the satellite, but um, yeah, Dorian is very big and hasn't really moved at all. Now, you can see the very defined line. Let's move in. Uh, that line is, that, that white thing is annoying me. Um, so, it looks like they are attaching more to Dorian. Now, right down here, 
south of Florida. And yeah, it looks like it's going to like attach itself to this hurricane. Um, you can see the microwave signatures, the ripple effect in Dorian right there. Okay. Um, but when you see these very, well, look how defined that is, that means it's getting hit by frequencies, holding it in place. All right. Yeah, I'd like people to at least become skeptical about what is taking place. That would be a good start. All right. Um, let's go to radar. This is all we're seeing and these <laughs> straight bands of precipitation that seem to have a, well, very defined uh, patterns to them. And Mother Nature doesn't operate like this. Mother Nature, yeah, she operates in a circular pattern. She does not, and we're seeing now rain come in from the Atlantic into Florida. But you can see how fried this is with frequencies. My God. Um, I want you to just... Here, let me show you. Local statement for Dorian, Charleston, South Carolina. Hurricane Dorian expected to impact the area Wednesday through Thursday. They started mandatory evacuations yesterday at noon. And it's about 410 miles south, southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, 390 miles south, southeast of Savannah, Georgia. And well, it's, it's just been sitting pretty much in the same area. So, people, look, I'm having a lot of difficulty researching information. YouTube, all I get is mainstream media YouTube videos. That's all I get. I was trying to get information about the evacuations, Mainstream media, mainstream media, mainstream media. Um, I did come across an article, and when I clicked on that article, that's what crashed my computer earlier. So I'm not going to click on the article, but if you do a search, South Carolinians uh, not happy about early evacuation, you'll come across one article where there's an awful lot of South Carolinians who are like, they don't even know the path of the storm. Uh, they don't know if it's actually going to hit, you know, uh, South Carolina. It's still sitting over the Bahamas. And yeah, the impact on close to a million people just in South Carolina, having that mandatory order to evacuate days and days before this hurricane is going to be getting to South Carolina, if it actually does, that is a major disruption. A major disruption. Um, but here, this is what our National Hurricane Center is saying. Locations may be uninhabitable for an exterior, extended period. This is the Charleston area large sections of nearshore escape routes and secondary roads washed out or flooded and impassable. Flood control systems and barriers could be uh, stressed. Drinking water and sewer services, 
negatively impacted hazardous containers and materials possibly present in surge waters elsewhere across southeast South Carolina and southeast Georgia. Little to no impact is anticipated. Okay, wait. Elsewhere across southeast South Carolina, southeast Georgia. Little to no impact. Do, does that make sense? Does it make sense to you? I read that and I think, okay, I don't understand. So only Southwest Georgia, Southwest South Carolina will be impacted. Am I missing something there? If I am, please let me know. I know that my brain has been compromised. So educate me. Uh, wind, prepare for life-threatening wind, having possible extensive impacts for areas roughly along and east of Interstate 95. Large trees snapping and uprooting, flooding rain, rivers, tributaries. It, it sounds like a repeat of what we lived last year. It's a repeat and, well, possible tornadoes. Um, now, here, we have another disturbance, and there is 30% chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. This one that developed in the Gulf, 80% uh, chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. Well, does it really surprise you? I mean, come on. Uh... Look at all that high frequency heating taking place. Another, another uh, possible damaging storm coming to Texas. My God. All right. Um, it doesn't stop. Well, we all knew it would get worse, right? We did know that. And it's gotten a whole lot worse. So, 120 mile per hour winds. That's according to the National Hurricane Center. Uh, and, you know, this is the buoy center. So, great. I can't pick up here. Well, the buoy and well, that buoy is kind of in direct line now with the eye, actually. It's right around here. Let me uh, pull it up a little closer. Right around here. So, uh, that buoy registers 49.9 knot, knots gusting to 66 knots. Oh, well, 120 miles per hour? No. And the knots, let's say it's at 51, 52 miles per hour. I want you to listen to one Pacific Redwood he just posted this video today. All right, so we're looking at uh, Hurricane Dorian right here. This uh, storm is now stalled in place, uh, nearly stationary, according to the uh, National Hurricane Center. Notice the evaporation pattern taking place here in this eight-hour loop. Uh, this storm was moving uh, westbound early this morning, and, it, and it's been basically parked right over this island on the, in the, the uh, Bahamas. By the way, the Bahamas is where the uh, Artemis.vm uh, is uh, registered that uh, weather derivatives and options, uh, catastrophic bonds uh, dealer, uh, their whole operation is uh, registered out there. So if there's anything redeeming about what's going on in the Bahamas, that would be the one single thing I could think of. All right. Uh, 
We've got to stop the uh, financial incentives for you know, gambling on the weather, particularly when we have weather manipulation. You know, like what we're seeing here, this, this uh, storm was moving due west, and now it has been stopped. We can see the high pressure going in. And look at this evaporation pattern here. Everything is just uh, disappearing. All these bands are uh, evaporating as this area of high pressure is going in. We can see the outline there. Here in the, uh, the infrared, this is the long wave infrared map, band number 14 on the GO 16 satellite. So, uh, for the time being, we don't know what's going to happen. All we know is we see that high pressure is going in. We've also got some high pressure between uh, this weather system up here and uh, the top end of Dory and the north end of this storm. So, this is not going to be going anywhere for a while, uh, it looks like to me. This, this could be parked here for uh, several several more hours, I would say. Also, we see a blast pattern right here. So the storm is, uh, has been weakened. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, National Hurricane Center map for the East Coast. Here is Dorian, uh, the statistics right now at uh, 9.15. We've got 130 mile per hour sustained winds. That's actually a Category 4, the very uh, bottom side of a Category 4, and we've got 946 millibars, so this thing has raised quite a bit. This is down around 900 and, uh, you know, 911, it was down at 911, which is a, I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but that's that was the lowest recorded pressure according to the uh, National Hurricane Center, and uh, today uh, we see that it's up at 946, it's been installed in place. And we can see some blast pattern activity on the uh, periphery of that storm. They're not hitting the eye wall, obviously, because the eye wall is, is uh, still very well organized and intact. Let's go ahead and look at the, uh, by the way, here we go. We've got a, another disturbance out here in the Gulf of Mexico with a 60% chance of hurricane formation in two days. And out here we've got another disturbance with a 30% chance. And then okay. Well, uh another very good video <clears throat> on Harold um, Sav's channel oh I hope I've pronounced your name correctly Dorian deep state engineered storm hurricane Dorian is slamming parts of the northwestern Bahamas the storm made landfall as a category 5 storm in the Abaco Islands Sunday afternoon it is the strongest hurricane in modern records for the area. The storm's maximum sustained winds have increased to 185 miles per hour, and forecasters say a life-threatening storm surge of up to 23 feet is possible there. Well, in case you haven't guessed by now, Dorian is as much a manufactured political storm as it is a geoengineered hurricane. The climate change and carbon trading billionaires are prepared to propagandize this to the hilt. And like the neuralizer in the movie Men in Black, the memory of Jeffrey Epstein has been erased from the public mind. You've always heard that the eye of the storm is calm. Now look at the rotation of the clouds inside the eye of Dorian and how they rotate nearly as fast as the eye wall with 175 mile an hour winds. Next, we see what appears to be aerosol sprayed inside the eye of the storm. All of those long, thin clouds appear to be aircraft aerosols. When you run the video in reverse, you can see how the trails become longer and shorter as the frame rocks back and forth. Actually, aluminum dust is called for in the Solarian Corporation microwave satellite patent designed for weather control and mitigation of hurricanes. Any technology that can weaken a hurricane can be reverse engineered to make it stronger. Dorian was almost stalled at Elbow K with 185 mile an hour winds at 2 p.m. on Sunday. The barometric pressure at landfall was an ominous 911 or 911 millibars, an interesting number with the 18th anniversary of that false flag event coming on Wednesday after next. If the storm continues on the straight path into Florida, it will run directly into Trump's mansion at Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach.
So is the deep state putting Trump under pressure to hop on board the global warming train? Maybe so. Links in the... Okay. So, <clears throat> more evidence that this is manufactured by man. By man. Now, evacuations, uh, it's... You know what? I'm not even going to play these videos. It, mainstream media, mandatory evacuations issued for South Carolina coastline, uh, just in South Carolina alone, over 800,000 are under mandatory evacuation. With uh, Georgia, I think it's a million, and then Florida, 1.5 million. I'm not sure about the numbers, if I'm correct. But, you know, Charleston, I believe that these areas are actually going to get pummeled. But it will be brought about deliberately, intentionally, by man, not Mother Nature. Absolutely. Charleston is known as low country, which means it's extremely prone to flooding. That's why businesses have already started boarding up, even though Dorian's forecast is days out. The governor also taking things seriously, ordering a mandatory evacuation for almost a million people across the coastline. They're all headed in one direction, and that's out to higher ground. Now, homeowners, before they left, picked up sandbags to try to protect their homes from potential floodwaters. One location told me today they gave out seven 150 sandbags in one hour. You can see uh, businesses here in historic downtown Charleston also using that sandbag uh, to protect their merchandise and other items inside the stores because they're worried Dorian will make its way here. Nora? Unbelievable. I'm late. I want you to listen to a little bit of logic before authority who is under a mandatory evacuation order Hi guys, this is Daniel I, I, I am I, I don't get the volume crap anymore. I'm so done. God. I don't get it. Sorry. Enter Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. Well I wanted to show you a few things. Um and tell you a few things. Let me tell you first. Here near the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area, where they're projecting, locally they're telling us that they're expecting this storm to be a, a Cat 3 to come into, if they're saying if it don't make landfall, it's going to be extremely close and we will experience in excess of 100 mile an hour winds. And they're saying some things that I have never heard them say before or anything like it. They're saying that as of tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, they're saying, and they're going door to door, putting notices on doors. I had a notice put on my door earlier today saying leave town. And I've gotten several alert messages on my phone and the other people around are getting them and their own television with the emergency broadcast system i've even got a few photos of that i'll show you here in a minute but they're they're saying leave town and they're saying that there will not be after tomorrow day going into tomorrow night they're uh they're saying that there will not be any police on the streets and there will not be any uh, emergency services like an ambulance and there will not be any fire services until further notice they're saying that you're on your own they literally are using those kind of words that that we are on our own after tomorrow and that we had better leave town and there's a mandatory evacuation in place already but they have never uh 
said that there's going to be no police presence or no nothing, just absolutely nothing. Along particularly, they said zones A, B, C, D, and E, I think it was, which covers all along the coast, but then it also goes inland about 50 miles. And that's just, that's just crazy. I've never heard them. It is crazy. And I do want to say that logic before authority, you know, it, it was last year, I believe, that he was in the same situation. Now, many people are paying rent the first of the month, second of the month, and <clears throat> there's an awful lot of people who just don't have any additional funds to stay at hotels. People don't have places to go. Uh, and we're talking at least a week, you know, depending on the extent of destruction that we see along the coast. It could be a lot longer. It was the National Hurricane Service that said, hey, uh, well, may not be habitable for an extended period of time. So I do want to say that Logic Before Authority uh, was asking if any of you have extra, you know, dollars to throw in his bucket. Um, you know, then uh, please help him out. But yeah, Governor McMaster did say, get out, leave now. Uh, but this, you know, no police, no fire, no emergency services. Things are very strange, okay? Something, I I'm, well, how many times have we said this? We see these very strange things taking place, you know, when the military come into areas because of hurricanes um, and take over. Well, I haven't been seeing much of that. What's happening in North Carolina with that drill? You know, the special forces in 21 counties. I haven't heard a thing about it. Yeah, I tried to do some research a couple of days ago came up with nothing. So you guys in North Carolina, what's happening? But you guys in Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, please keep us posted on what is taking place. Because researching this now, all you get is mainstream media. And wow, I don't like that at all. I did hear from a subscriber who has a friend who lives in St. Lucie. She called, uh, I don't know, it was about 10 o'clock my time or 9.30 p.m. She said her friend told her that they had no rain, not a blade of grass was moving, no wind, and they turned the power out. St. Lucy. Now, I don't know if it was all of St. Lucy, but really, turning the power out when nothing is occurring? Yes, very strange things are happening. So, when we put this together with weather modification, weather being used as a weapon, and we see you know, these mandatory evacuations that start days and days before. I mean, th this thing has not moved. Something, it, yeah, it's very strange. So, Hurricane Dorian weakens to Category 3, South Florida outside forecast path, and, well, you know, where is it going? Uh, Boca Raton, St. Lucie, who, who knows? But listen to this. 
This is the director of the National Hurricane Center. It just hasn't moved. All day long, we've seen the center of this hurricane just sitting in the same spot, battering the Bahama Islands. We're out of food. That was just a few open restaurants, you know, um, up uh, north, I think, Jacksonville area, um, or it could be Port St. Lucie. But here, now, this is uh, AccuWeather. Yes, senior meteorologist for AccuWeather. The one thing that still bothers us is that intense storms tend to wobble. And they can wobble as much as 10 miles one way and 10 miles another way. So if it wobbles once during a rotation and wobbles again, it can bring hurricane force winds to the coast very quickly. That's the reason why most meteorologists looking at this are still very, very nervous about this. I've never heard this kind of uh, well, uh, forecasting from meteorologists, I have never heard this. It just takes a little wiggle, a little movement, a little jog, and then all of a sudden you're a little closer to the coast. That's the director of the National Hurricane Center. He explained that atmospheric conditions can change the direction of what has been an unpredictable storm. Well, man has the use of electromagnetic frequencies and man can change the direction of the storm and actually man can hold it in place for a very long time so yeah all of these counties mandatory evacuation orders this is in North Carolina North Carolina your mandatory evacuations will start tomorrow at 12 p.m. well today at 12 p.m. Dare County residents uh, it becomes effective at 6 a.m. Wednesday, September 4th. This was Georgia starting noon tomorrow. Individuals east of I-95 in all of these counties, uh, 8 a.m. Tuesday. Stay vigilant, be safe. You got your evacuation orders. Um, Eight hundred and twenty thousand people. They've reversed the lanes. Interstate twenty six four hours earlier than planned on Monday. Everything's closed too. Uh, it, it, the list of closures already. Government offices closed tomorrow. Well, no, I'm sorry. In a few hours, they've closed today. So in like uh, six hours and Dorian is still sitting in the same place. Please. This is this is really outrageous. Schools are closed. But here this article uh, the Weather Channel nine hours ago, so it's more like 10 hours ago. Evacuations are set to start Tuesday in Georgia and South Carolina when the evacuations were actually called for 12 p.m. Monday. Why are they saying Tuesday? Schools, government offices, colleges across the region closed. States of emergency, Carolinas, Virginia, Georgia. First evacuation orders were issued in North Carolina on Monday. All right. Um, schools, buildings, closure list. You want to see this? Savannah, Georgia. Schools. All closed. All closed. Daycare and care centers closed Wednesday or Tuesday. Hospitals. Well, one receives a waiver to shelter in place during the passage of Hurricane Dorian. Other hospitals, all patients who are stable should be discharged. 
and those who are too sick um, too sick to be transported will stay during the storm roads and bridges are going to be closing water and sewer authority closed all these businesses closed all right uh, you know I'm not saying that evacuation is not necessary I'm not saying that closing down these areas is not important all I'm saying is you've got this hurricane still it is it hasn't Well, I'm not even sure which way it's going because it kind of looks like it's going, well, backwards. Um, all right, guys. You guys in Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, please let us know what is going on because I don't want to listen to mainstream media. I don't want to read the articles. I want to hear from people on the ground about what is taking place. Look at the evaporation that's taking place right here. I mean, this is very bizarre. All links are below.